Hello, my name is Dean Alhoss, and today I'm going to teach you how you lay out the non-current assets part of a vertical balance sheet. So, what is a non-current or fixed asset? Well, a fixed asset or a non-current asset is a resource that the business will need to be able to run their company. The category of a non-current asset is applied to any resource that a business expects to own for more than one year. So in order to be able to run their company, a business will usually need to purchase land and buildings, furniture fittings, so essentially that will be items such as the doors, windows, tables, or any other fixtures that you would need to be able to operate your factory. If you're actually producing goods, then you will need the machinery to be able to make your toy trains and to deliver the goods to your customer, you will probably need to buy a company vehicle. Now, all of these assets, when you buy them, you would expect them to last for more than one year. Now, they may not last more than one year, but the point being that you would put them in this category as a non-current or fixed asset because the expectation by the accountant is that this will be a resource that will be used for greater than one year. When you come to put together a vertical balance sheet, then the first part of the balance sheet will be the category of non-current or fixed assets. You'll notice that the balance sheet is always expressed as at a point in time. Why do we write as at? Well, a balance sheet is, if you like, a picture in time of everything the business owns, the assets, against where the money came from to buy those assets, i.e. liabilities, money borrowed from outside the company, or the capital invested by the shareholders or the owners. So for a sole trader, we would list the fixed assets or non-current assets in order of how long you expect them to last. So obviously land and buildings of your factory um, will last the longest, so they go at the top. And then fixtures and fittings, which would be the doors and windows, um, tables, etc., followed by machinery, and then the actual delivery vans, company vehicles, company cars, etc. In the first part of the um, category, you'll find a column which refers to historic cost. Simply, the accounting rule suggests that you should always list the actual original purchase price of the asset. So here, we bought our land and buildings originally for 100000 We purchased fixtures for fifty. The machine costs were 80000 And when we bought the company vehicles, the original cost was $40,000. Now, all these assets will lose value except for land and buildings because usually land and buildings goes up in value over the years. Fixtures and fittings, the more you use them, the less efficient they become, just as with machinery and with a motor vehicle. A good example to use is that actually in most countries, as soon as you turn the ignition on the key of a motor vehicle and you drive it away from the uh, company showroom, often the asset will lose 20 to 25 percent of its value. Why? Well, it's no longer new, it's second hand, it's been used. A machine is the same. The more toy trains you get it to make during the year, the less it's going to be worth. Now, accountants are allowed to take away the depreciation that happens as a result of using an asset in the company, such as a machine, from their gross profit. And effectively, that means that you're going to um, produce a profit and loss account with a lower net profit. In the category for non-current or fixed assets, we always have to show the actual net book value, the true value of the assets at the end of the financial year. That's so that we follow the accounting rule of prudence and we don't overvalue an asset. So here we would estimate that our fixtures and fittings have lost $20,000 as a result of using them. Our machinery has lost $10,000 in depreciation as a result of being used to make the toy trains. And the company vehicle has um, amassed enough miles in delivery terms to have lost a depreciation value of $30,000. Taking away the depreciation in each case from the historic cost, 
you can see today the net book value of each asset. So although we paid, say, for example, 80000 for our machines, when we've depreciated them by 10000 then today they're worth 70000 And if we looked at our vehicles, they've lost quite a bit of value in depreciation, in this case $30,000, and today they would be shown as having a value of ten thousand dollars and then at the end we simply add up all the net book value and that gives us the current value of all our non-current or fixed assets in our balance sheet thanks for listening if you found this tutorial useful then please do wait around for the next tutorial to load up in the playlist remember you can subscribe to our youtube channel and if you did find this video tutorial useful then please press the like button.